What's up? It's Jared Cagle. This is a podcast called Burning Questions because we are answering your burning questions. Hi, my name is Kaylin Cagle, and I am your host today for Burning Questions podcast. This is episode eight. Really excited about it. Got my mom here, um, Tane Shannon. Good morning. She's awesome. Y'all are about to find out. Um, She's brought us a candle today. This is Tribe Kelly Hunt Club, (laughs) and we got this for Christmas from my sister, Riley. She gets us all the cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, So let me me go ahead and light this. Um, (laughs) It won't light. It's going. There you go. (laughs) Okay, Tribe Kelly Hunt Club. Let me smell it. It's a really good smell. It's kind of it's kind of manly, but in a good way. Um, so I I'm gonna kind of spoil the question just a smidge before we read it because I want to introduce you a little bit. Okay. Um, we're gonna be talking about reading our Bibles and how important it is to get that one on one. Um, study the word time, getting to know Jesus deeper and deeper yeah. and more and more. Um, so important. So, so much freedom in that, so much power in that. Um, on the flip side of it, there's so many struggles, mm-hmm. uh, distractions that keep us yeah. from wanting to get into the word sometimes. So that's kind of the direction we're going today. And I'm, I'm really excited that you're the one here that's going to be talking into that because um for you, what I've seen over the years is you treating uh, your relationship with God, your your quiet time relationship with God mm-hmm. as like a, like a treasure mm-hmm. um, for years and years. And I'm sure it, it was a process getting to this point for you. But I saw you get up every single day and um, get, you know, you made your coffee, of course, and then you got in the work. Um, and that's what I would see. And that's that's incredibly special. And like I said, I know that that just didn't happen overnight, but, um, it's important because you haven't had, Mm -hmm. you haven't had the easiest life. Um, this is fun fact. It's not, it wasn't that fun actually, but you were kidnapped, um, when you were like 27 and, uh, you escaped said kidnapping like a boss. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. (laughs) Um, but then on a heavier note, these last, uh, that's pretty heavy, actually. But on an even heavier note, mm-hmm. um, these last five years or so have been really, really hard ones for us yeah. as a family. We have um, we dealt with addiction in our family. Um, my brother spent uh, Mick spent two years in rehab. Mm-hmm. Um, dealt with addiction Al- almost three years ago. Mick passed away. Mm-hmm. Ten months later, Dad passed away. So all all of these hard, hard things have happened, um, in the past few years. And what I want to say to you is that I, because of how, um, well, first of all, you're, you are a rock like I've never seen through all of these hard things. Your, your faith never, it was never shaky. It never wavered. And I think that's because you were so uh, you were walking with God and he was walking with you. And so when the storms came, you just stood your ground and you knew that you could um, that you could hold God at his word. And that when he says, I'm with you, you knew that he was. And that when he said, um, you know, I'm going to finish what I started, you knew that he would. Mm-hmm. When he said, I'm going to make a way when it seems like there is no way, he would do that. And you knew that. And that strength, um, it didn't come just out of nowhere. I think you developed it in all those years that you had spent being intentional in your relationship with him. So um, with that being said, Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to read the question. Okay. And this was submitted by a student, and we just want you to help answer it. Um, Okay. So as a Christian, I know that I need to read my Bible more and study God's word. How do I fall in love with studying God's word and wanting to spend more time with him? How would you answer that question? Ah, it, it's a tough question. And I'm going to be real honest up front. And number one, thank you. Thank You're you welcome. for all that because that was, that was special. It was really um, sweet, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really <laughs> sweet. <laughs> that meant a lot. But um, um, you know, the enemy, ever since you asked me to do this, the enemy has 
uh, wreaked havoc over my, my mind because this is my struggle. I struggle with this. This is not something that I wake up every morning and morning is my, my quiet time. I am a morning person and that is my quiet time. Uh, it can be any time of the day. Let me just let that be said. But um, but morning is is mine. And so often I would love to just grab my cup of coffee, sit on my chair, flip that remote and watch the news and pick up my phone and mindlessly scroll while I watch the news. I would love to yeah. do that. That's the easy. That's what my flesh is drawn to do. Yeah. Um, but it is a choice even this morning <laughs> to not do that. Yeah. And um, at age 28, and I'm not going to get into that part yet, but I will share a little more about it. Um, I, that's when I rededicated my life. I said, I can't go back to the way I was. I am rededicating my life. That's when and you were kidnapped. That's when I was kidnapped. And I'll share a tiny bit, not, not a lot, because uh, we're talking about something else. But but that is when I uh, woke up and I knew that my life was different and I could not go back to the way I was. Um, and I knew that part of that was plug into a church heart and soul. We were going to church. You were three and a half. Mick was one and a half. Uh, Riley was not yet born, but um, we were in church, but we were there because we wanted to be good parents. We weren't there to to grow as a you know person. We were there because we wanted we knew it was right. And so but I knew that plugging into that and heart and soul and reading the Bible was was what I should do. And so I, it's so funny because I, I didn't even know anything about the Bible, really. I knew I believed in it. I knew it was real. Never had any doubts about that. But I didn't know what it said or or anything. And I remember somebody said, well, start in the Gospels, you know, start reading the Gospels. And and I, I really couldn't even tell you really what that was. <laughs> That's sad. I'm ashamed. Um, but I learned that it was Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so I started reading. And honestly, I am so ashamed to say this. It confused me because... Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the same story written in dip, through different yeah. eyes. I didn't know that. So when I would read that, it was it was confusing. And um, so, honestly, I kind of put the Bible down and just let it go for a while. I stayed faithfully in church. I found a gift in worship that, to this day, is my rock. And um, so th- through those, though, God just... He kept leading me back to this. I, I learned about a Bible study, Beth Moore. That gave me confidence. Um, I learned that I wasn't the only one that was like that. Uh, and that gave me confidence to keep reading. Um, but through worship and friends and serving and all of that, I discovered that my perception of the Bible was completely wrong. I discovered that, you know, I was reading the Bible to as a chore as my ticket into heaven, that somehow miraculously this was going to prove to God how much I loved him and how much I changed. And um, it was going to change my status with him. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I don't know when it happened, how it happened. I just remember one day waking up and being enthralled with the word of God. I remember thinking, this is literally the spoken word of God. He has spoken every single word of this. This is his love story. And it doesn't matter if I read this or not. It It is, he's going to love me just the same if I read it or I don't. Yeah. I could surrender to him, give my life to him and never pick this up. Mm-hmm. But, and it's not going to, it's not going to keep me from him. This is his beautiful gift mm-hmm. from him to me, to us. And And it's about his people, you know, the people that he created, the first people, the the first people that walked with Jesus. It's 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 a love story. And and it is a gift that I want to choose to read. And and so from that moment on, I just thought it's not a chore. You know, it doesn't matter if I do it every day. I want to do it every day, but it doesn't matter if I do it every day. So. I, I, you know, I, it started there. That's where it started. Take me through um, the evolution of your your walk with God. Like you, um, 
at, at one point, I'm sure you were kind of like most of us. Like for me, I I, I really want to read the Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I want to have my uh, discipline, quiet time. Mm-hmm. Um, I just get lost in like distractions, like mm-hmm. wanting to wanting to be mindless when I should sit down and read or, yeah. you know, just having mounds of laundry everywhere uh, and three really loud children um, for teenagers like there's school there's friends there's Instagram there's all kinds of things um, sometimes it's just hard to want to sit down and read the Bible uh, take us take us from that point for you to um, you know through the process of you coming to the point where it it is I crave it like it's necessity and and maybe it's it's still hard to do sometimes, mm-hmm. but it's become such a discipline for you that it's it's life. Yeah, I think first of all, to answer that is that it's I, I you know, we all have certain things that we crave in the word of God. I love worship. Mm-hmm. I have friends who crave this. <laughs> I can't sit here and honestly tell you that I go through my day longing to get into the Word of God. Um, I just simply make a choice. I long to worship, but I can't say even today that I long for this. Um, I pray for that all the time, all the time. And and all I can say is it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, what matters is, and what God sees us is our sacrifice. Um, a verse for someone who is so, so busy reading a verse of this is gold to God. Mm -hmm. Same as if a person who sits at home all day and does not do a lot, reads a book at a time. There's no different to God. They're both the same sacrifice. So, because God knows our heart. He knows what we have sacrificed to read that one verse. Yeah. And so I had to get to the point where that was okay because motherhood, because work, because all of those things you mentioned do get in the way. Yeah. And it bogs us down. I remember having the mindset of, well, what's the point? If I can't throw myself into this, what is the point? But there is a point to it. And I had to get to the point where I said, this has got to be like brushing my teeth. Yeah. This has got, even if it's one verse, take a picture of that verse and think about it, ponder it all day. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I began to think of it as brushing my teeth and just like it was part of my routine. If it was just one verse and, and many, many, many times it was just one paragraph, whatever, um, a daily devotion or whatever. But it it grows and it's in the ebbs and flows of life. It's different. Um but mine started, the the evolution of my growth started when I was kidnapped. Um, I did not read the Bible before that. Um, and that was such, such a spiritual night for me. God allowed that to happen in my life. Um, I was kidnapped for, for ransom for 24 hours. I was gone. He took me from you. He took me from Mick. Um, Mike was up at work and it was, uh, it was all day long. God gave me the courage to escape. He provided the way he parted the waters. I made it home. Um, and after that, I knew that it, life was different. It was just different. I could not go back. And, and like I said, in the beginning, I knew church and Bible was, was the key to that change and did the Bible study. But, you know, in between Bible studies, there is, a period before another Bible study. And I never could grasp, other than the Bible study in the beginning, how to read my Bible every day. I just, I let my flesh, you know, yeah. turn on the news or do whatever. Um, but but struggles, um, struggles go on in life and they hit families. And I remember I had this desire to know the promises of God. I remember my friends would if something happened, they would, they'd say, well, you know, remember the promise. And I didn't really know what promises of God were. I didn't yeah. know what that meant. And so I just made a commitment to choose it every single day. And then you were, I don't really remember how old you were, but somewhere around 10 or so. Um, you know, my life had been, other than the kidnapping, my life had been relatively easy, just common everyday problems. And, um, I remember uh, addiction hit our family like a ton of bricks. And um, my husband was having some extreme back issues. 
and neck issues, and they were debilitating. He was our provider, and I helped him, but he was our provider, and he was struggling. So he went to the doctor, and the doctor put him on pain pills, and and they took hold, and he found himself going down this road, and um, our marriage suffered. Now he he stayed on top of it. He he knew he was a doctor himself, and he knew how to take care of this, and he stayed on top of it. But but it was hard, and you know it going to the Word of God was was um, was my. It wasn't easy. I still had to decide it because your flesh automatically is going to say, you know, we're growing apart. Yeah. We're, um, you know, I, I can't forgive him. He can't forgive me. You know, you're. that's what's wrong with the world is we're not grounded in the promises of God. And, and we automatically do what our flesh wants to do. But Mike and I, we chose to pray together. I remember praying, God, I just want a godly husband. You know, I just want a godly husband. I want one that will pray with me, one that will um, read the word with me. And because of this hard time, that's, we, we learned to do that. Mm-hmm. Now, it didn't look like probably the preacher and his wife, yeah. but God gave me this, this vision of your perception is wrong, Tang. Mm-hmm. Everybody's walk doesn't look, yeah. they're not cookie cutters of each other. And I had this incredible husband who was struggling, but getting up every day and providing and working for his family. And at night he would come home and he'd say, will you pray with me? Will you pray over me? And to watch him read that one verse or pray that that elementary prayer yeah. and you know what I'm talking about I remember. at first my flesh was like God you know help him but over the years <laughs> like his dad would pray like this he would put his hands out and he'd go hi God this is, this is Mike yeah um, and then he would pray and it yeah was pretty hilarious it was hilarious but over time it Oh, man, the Holy Spirit, because when you get in the Word of God, the Holy Spirit comes to life. This is the spoken Word of God. And when you get it in your soul, you learn to speak it over others. And He changes you. And um, I remember um, the Lord just, He said, Tame, you have got, I have given you a godly man. He is not without fault. You are not without fault. He is... um, he is doing his best here. He is opening the word of God with you. He is praying over you and for you. And and he is asking you to do it for him. And through these stories of just life, just going through life, and God revealing to me that it doesn't look like what I want it to look like. It is so much better. Um, he just began to reveal, and I just, day by day, just started... Um, just falling in love with the word and and believing and understanding what his promises were. Um, And then I remember, you know, in 2000, Mike and I overcame that. And it was, it was an incredible thing. I mean, I can't even describe. We learned to date. We learned to go through life and tackle the issues and not just discard them. Um, and it was from reading the Word of God. It was from worshiping and um, staying in church. Um, and then in 2000, um, I don't know, 10 or 11, that's when Mick started having all his surgeries from football injuries. And he had about three, four, including wisdom teeth and pain pills. You know, um, you know, we raised y'all that we didn't drink. You know, we, we told y'all we decided not to drink as a as a family. And. I uh, told y'all why, you know, we told y'all that the roots, we have a lot of alcoholism in our roots and it's just something that we just decided not to do. And um, so um, that it never occurred to us about pain pills, even when Mike went through it, it didn't occur to us. And so, so he went down that road of pain pills. Uh, he had actually decided uh, to stay away from alcohol in his life, but none of us thought about the pain pills. And so um, 
So in 2000, you know, I knew something was going on. I knew something was going on. But when he came home for Christmas in 2013, I saw something was, some, he was skinny. That was not Mick. He was, and he was irritable and that was not Mick. Um, so I remember just rededicating my life again to prayer, to fasting and to reading the word. And that January, I decided, okay, this fast is for him. You know, typically it was general for the family, for growth, you know, for all that. But this I dedicated to him. And I remember every morning waking up and opening up the word and just praying over him and asking God to give him the courage to come home. And everywhere I turned in the Bible, it talked about 40 days, 40 days, 40 days. And I was like, okay, God, I'll, I'll do 40 days. I felt like that was the word of God telling me to do 40 days for him. And um, on the Daniel fast, on the Daniel fast, where you're eating uh, fruits and veggies, fruits and vegetables, yep. yes, fruits and veggies. And um, which is hard, <laughs> which is hard. Um, so, yeah. um, so anyways, I'm, I'm in this and at the 21 day mark, when the church ended their fast, you know, he knew we ended it. We went to lunch afterwards and he saw where I was still fasting. And he looked at me and he said, are you still fasting? I said, I am. And um, he dropped it. But one week later, he um, he texted me one night and it said, Mom, can I ask you why you're fasting and praying? And, and um, this time around, why you're going so long? And I just kind of blew him off and said, wouldn't you like to know? And he, he texted back and he said, no, I do want to know. He said, he said, I'm trying to read my Bible. And he said, I can't. He said, something is stopping me. And I just remember right then the Holy Spirit just said, you know, he's in the battle of his life. He is in the battle of his life. And so I told him, I said, yeah, I'm, I'm fasting for you. I said, I know something's going on. And and I'm just fasting that you'll, get, you'll have the courage to come home and tell me. And um, he said, I'll be home tomorrow. He finally made it back about 9 o'clock that night. And I just remember him getting out of his car. He fell into our arms and just started confessing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he just confessed everything, everything. And then, you know, long story short, he went off and he did two years of rehab. Um so that was kind of my evolution of just hardships. Of It started with the kidnapping. God you know, allowed all these hardships to happen, and it drove me deeper and deeper into realizing that God is always with us. This is His, this is his love story to us. This is how these families made it. Yeah. You know, they were like us. In the beginning, when I started reading this, I thought that the people, the biblical heroes, were almost perfect. That's what I thought. Yeah. The more you read this, the more you see that they are just like me and you. Mm -hmm. they, their lives are a mess. And through reading this, through all the hardships, I realized that this is this is how we make it. This is how we make it through life. Yeah. And if I had not had this to draw from, as hard as it was to make that decision, um, I, I would not. I would be a basket case. I would be... Just, I, I don't know. I don't know where I'd be. I would not have the joy that I have. I would not have the peacefulness that I have. I would not know that I know that my husband and my son are in heaven. You were talking about Mick, and um, I love that that part of the story where Mick texted you and said, I'm, I'm trying to read my Bible, but I can't. Um, something's holding me back. And that's such a, that's such a spiritual warfare mm -hmm. Um that happens to a lot of us and what I want to know what you would what you would say how you would encourage uh, the person the kid who either is feeling that spiritual warfare I can't read my Bible I, I want to but I can't or that just um, not really caring about it yeah how practically like where would you start <laughs> you know uh, you mentioned like the promises of God that mm -hmm. you started with like just where, what, how would you tell them to start? Because it's hard. It is hard. It's, you know, it's, it, it has to come from within. It has to, um, I look at it as Mike and I, our relationship was, was based on sacrifice. Like we chose to love each other. When times got hard, 
we chose to love each other. It was a choice. We could have left each other and gone our separate ways. Um, but we chose it. And when you love someone and when you love the relationship and Jesus Christ is, we love him. We lo- we want a relationship with him. It's, it's no marriage is his, his uh, model for us. And so it's no different, but Mike and I had to make sacrifices for each other. I had to do things I didn't want to do. He had to do things he didn't want to do. He, it was uncomfortable for him to pray with me. Mm-hmm. It, he, that was uncom- That was a sacrifice yeah. for him, but he learned it because he chose it. And, and the same with me. It was hard for me at first to do that. It was hard for me to pray with y'all. I mean, that's uncomfortable stuff because we're vulnerable to that. Um, but we, we do it. We choose it. If we want it, it is as simple as choosing it. And then you just open it up. You, you decide my, my, and, and my advice is that you would open your, your Bible and you would choose. Do you want to go from beginning to end? Do you want to start with the Gospels? Do you want to just pick a book, you know, Genesis, John? But whatever you choose, read the whole book. Mm-hmm. Don't just don't just do, you know, John 1 and 2 and then switch to Matthew 1 and 2. Don't do that. Read the whole thing. Be be exact when you do it. But but it doesn't matter if you do a verse a day. It does not matter if you do a chapter or read the whole book in one day. That that's not the point. The point is for it to get inside of you so that the Holy Spirit can come to life. The Holy Spirit is in us. The minute we receive receive Christ, he is there. But it is through this making choices of sacrifice that he comes to life. And when he comes to life, it's it's when you can go through those hardships and have peace and and have vict- victory over it and live. Yeah. But I would say my advice um, is you've got to change your perception of it. You know, it can't be a chore. It can't be... Um, it's more about the heart. Yeah. It can't be that you check it off your list. You know, I've gone to church this week. I've spent time in prayer and I've checked my Bible reading off. It Even if you do it <clears throat> once a week, it, if that's how you got to start, then do it. But do it once a week with your heart in it, you know, focusing yeah. and, and trying to understand and, yeah. and meditate on that word. Um, change your perception. This is his gift. It is his gift to you. I, um, I had someone ask me one time, they, and they didn't mean anything by it. We've talked about this. She, um, she said, Tane, it just, she was searching, and she said, it seems like your discipline of praying and fasting and, and reading the Word just, it didn't pay off. And, and I, I got that. I got what she was saying. I understood that. But I felt at that time the Holy Spirit come over me, and and I I just looked at her and I said, "But you're so wrong. You are so wrong." I said, "My son could have died on the streets of Atlanta. You know, he could, they could have just found him on the streets of Atlanta, mm-hmm. and he could have died not knowing how much he was loved. When Nick died, he knew how much he was loved. He knew that." that he was loved unconditionally. He knew he had a family that would have moved heaven and hell for him. And he, you know, I told her, I said, we had the gift of him coming and confessing. God gave him the gift to come home, the courage to come home and share with us. He gave him the courage to go to rehab for two years. We got the blessing of watching him courageously fight that battle. And, you know, not everybody wins their battle, not with cancer, not with addiction. You know, it's not the plan for everybody, but we got to watch him fight it. Mm -hmm. We got to watch him come home for a year and spend sweet time and and get to know Everett. I mean, just through that relationship, I got to see what kind of dad he would be. And that was a gift. Mm -hmm. I feel like if, if it wasn't for this and fasting, that I probably would just have an ordinary marriage. But when I lost Mike, I could see that, you know, when he died, we had an extraordinary marriage. And, sorry. <laughs> no. But there was so many, it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. 
Yeah. But um, there were so many blessings, so many blessings in the in the battles of life. If you just have the perception of this, mm-hmm. I mean, when you read this, you have the perception of Christ, and and that's just worth everything. It is. I think that. Um, I think that this is encouraging. This is going to encourage people to to see that this is a game changer. This yeah. this literally changes uh, hardships. Like life is inevitably hard. It just is, and it's um, it's good and it's hard all all at the same time. And when you're walking with God, and when and God's walking with you and you know him deeply, you know his heart, you know his heart for you, it just mm-hmm. changes everything. Um, and it does, it gives you this freedom and this joy when you're walking through the storms that you would not have mm-hmm. otherwise. And that's powerful. And I hope that, um, I hope that that's what people walk away with from this. And um, I'm thankful that you came on today. It was good. Fun. <laughs> it feels cleansing. <laughs> Thanks for asking me. Yes. Thanks for listening to this episode of Burning Questions. If you have a burning question that you've been longing for an answer to, DM us on our Instagram at cmcstudents underscore.